Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game by Konami, was a phenomenon when it hit the NES in 1990. I played this game a few times in the arcade and couldn't believe my siblings and I could now play it at home. I didn't care it was only two players compared to the four player co-op of the arcade and I hardly noticed how much the graphics were being toned down. Anyway, one of my brothers recently stopped over for a couple of days so between trips to the pub I took advantage of this and recorded some co-op play with him. Despite not playing the game in 25 years, we quickly got to grips with the game and mastering hitting the two buttons at the same time for the stronger attack. This is what's great about this game. You can just pick up the controller and crack on. There's nothing to learn, nothing to figure out. Unlike the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, this game was actually influenced by the cartoon. The enemies, the bosses, everything. Well, maybe not everything. Not these random marbles falling down the stairs. What is this, Marble Madness? In level one, don't worry about the fire at the bottom of the screen. It's just there for effect, it doesn't hurt you. What should worry you is that this game is made for kids, yet it shows foot soldiers using an elevator during a fire. The first boss you get to is Rocksteady, which I think is a really hard boss to start the game off with. At least the boss is flashing when you know he's almost defeated. And I cannot believe Shredder's been hiding in that pod the whole time and no one even noticed. To finish it off, this crazy jump after grabbing April, I mean this is hilarious, I mean that's gotta be 15 feet and he's carrying someone. Level 2, you're on the surface streets and Shredder's managed to get himself on TV. Keep going through the level and pass the foot soldiers throwing dynamite, which kind of reminds me of Double Dragon 2. Then on to this section. Like the first Ninja Turtles game, it has random pizza all over the place, just like real life. However this time, they have gone one step further and labeled the pizza to eliminate all doubt. I mean, come on, what else is it going to be? Weirdly, scaring the woman on the skateboard counts as a kill. Then you go on to this diagonal scene, which I thought was pretty cool, replicating the arcade. Around the corner and a couple foot soldiers will try to surprise you. I don't know how they hid between the sign and the building. Are they like wafer thin? Bebop is another hard boss. At least his ray gun is easy to avoid. But the first two levels in this game are just too hard. Look at this. We barely beat this guy. Zero lies left and only two life bars. This could have gone either way. The second part of the second level is in the sewers and this is the easiest level in the game. You can fly through this without even dying. Just watch out when you jump into the water. You can find yourself attacked by missiles popping out of the water. How random is this hazard? You see mousers for the first time in the game and I like to get in a rhythm with a special attack just to get rid of them. The end boss is Baxter. He doesn't attack you, he just drops mousers. You can farm these mousers for extra points or extra lives and he is the easiest boss in the game. The difficulty of this level is what you should see in the first level, not the second. The first part of the third level is one of the two extra levels found in the nest port of the game. I'm not sure why they added this, maybe to make up for the shortcomings of this version, but I find this snow level super annoying and I always just want to get back to the main game. Look at this level, it starts off by you having to avoid giant snowballs falling from the sky. I mean, where are they coming from? This truck is pretty cool, but I can't believe both of us got hit by it twice. It has spikes on the front of it. Is this supposed to be a snow plow? It looks more like that truck you find in Contra rather than anything to do with snow removal. To make things worse, you then have to fight some snowmen. I mean, come on. Couldn't we think of anything else? The end boss is, you guessed it, a polar bear. It's laughable really, but he's fairly easy, just keep junk kicking him. And this includes when he summons a giant snowball. If you do that, he can't catch it, and that's the end of the level. Then you just jump kick the weather machine. Now we move back to the original game, with the parking garage level. I love this level, and trying to avoid being run over by cars leaving the parking lot. Top tip, watch out for two cars side by side, the same color. What else I like to try to do, is explode the barrels just as the foot soldiers were jumping out the van. I also think fighting Baxter's a fly instead of refighting Bebop and Ruxetti is improvement over the arcade. Although he's super easy to fight, who wants to fight the same boss twice? Where did April's face go? Wow, the turtle van looks like a shoebox with wheels. Level 4 is a highway level, which is broken into two parts. I find this level a bit boring and repetitive, and what I find particularly annoying is the spearman throwing a spear 
and then another spear just magically appears in their hands. However, I do find the foot soldiers holding the torpedoes above their heads really funny. I mean, how strong must these guys be? It's hilarious. I also love kicking the foot soldiers off their bikes. It's a game highlight in my opinion. At the end of this section, you get giant tires thrown at you. Again, these guys must be super strong. At least you can bash them back at them. And jump into the sky. The second part of level 4 is on a skateboard, which is really cool. But other than foot soldiers appearing on mini helicopters, there really isn't much to say about this level. Since I've been a kid, the ending of this level has really annoyed me. It's quite clear the turtle van is traveling in a straight line when it crashes, but look, where does this barrier come from? The cutscene shows it crashing over the side. This lack of continuity really bothers me. I mean, I don't have sleepless nights over it, but it just could have been done a bit better. Level 5. What's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game without a Splinter rescue? Unfortunately, Splinter, a very experienced ninja, keeps getting captured. And yes, that is Splinter, and not a random pig the mouses are carrying away. This is also the first time you have to battle a rock soldier from Dimension X. And when you defeat him, Splinter is free. Level 6 is the second of the bonus levels for the NES. This is a dreadful level. In fact, for this level I just handed my controller over to my son to complete this level with my brother. Look at these ninja guys here. Ridiculous. What's going on? Then we move on to some black and white tigers, then some mechanical scorpions. What a waste of time. This game is plenty long without these extra levels. To be fair, the end boss, the robotic samurai, with his flying head is pretty cool. But it doesn't make up for the rest of the level. Right, there it is, as the turtles say and this crazy jump to the Technodrome, and Turtles of course, known for jumping impossible distances like this. Wait, what? We gotta find the Technodrome? You already found it! Did they even proofread this section? Anyway, we're finally at the Technodrome. It's a pretty standard level, nothing you haven't seen already, but it can be tough going. You can probably make it all the way to this level without using any continues. You come across a boss, a rock soldier from Dimension X, Try to avoid the electric door, but once you turn them into boulders, you can move on to Krang. I fight Krang, like I fight many of the other bosses, is through jump kicks. You're just barely touching his back and avoiding any counterattacks. In this case, with Krang, you've also got to worry about the lasers coming out of his eyes. You also got to worry about his hands, which turn into missiles, and for some reason, he seemed to have infinite hands. Defeat him, and he says he's invincible. Well, that lines up a sequel quite nicely. I'll get you eventually, Krang. Have it! Right, on to the final boss, Shredder. He splits into two, so you need to make sure you're attacking the right one, and not the clone. He also has a demutation gun, which is a major pain. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Well, that was a quick defeat. Okay, let's try that again. The Shredder that loses the helmet is the fake Shredder. You need to be attacking the other one. I never beat Shredder as a child, and I don't think I'm going to beat him on this attempt. This is going to be close... Nope, not this time. Right, third time lucky. Right, got the helmets off both of them. They should almost be defeated. Finally! This has been 25 years in the making. Now the Technodrome spontaneously explodes for some reason, and that's the end of a really good game. Yes, it's been repetitive at times, just attacking different colored foot soldiers over and over, but the joy of laying waste to the Foot Clan over many levels absolutely trumps that. The only thing I would change is getting rid of those extra levels. They're not needed. That's Turtle Power, and until next time. <laughs>